Hi, I'm Saurav. Why did IP networks form the backbone of the internet today? The internet is a packet switch network where packets are switched hop by hop from source to destination by IP routers. But the packets are transported between the routers in an underlying nationwide network of optical fibers and circuit switches. And so typically, large service providers such as AT&T and Verizon support two such infrastructures, a packet switch IP network and an underlying circuit switch transport network. Today, these networks are run separately. They are planned, designed and operated by different groups of highly skilled people using different sets of tools, even if they are in the same organization. Keeping two networks going also means duplicating resources and functionality and as a result, extremely high capital and operational costs. This is a very expensive way to run a network. In our research, we wanted to find a simpler way to merge these two networks while keeping their benefits. We observe that both networks carry flows. The IP network carries packet flows, and the underlying circuits are flows too. They are carrying data between two endpoints in the network. We thought we'd try controlling both networks as if they are just built out of flows, carried over a topology and then build the same control plane on top of both networks, therefore merging them into one. We also hoped we'd get new benefits. Instead of the transport network being slow and static, we hope to make it more dynamic and flexible, with a greater degree of interaction with the IP network. Recently, people have been using OpenFlow to control the flow of traffic in packet networks. We thought OpenFlow could be used to control circuits in the transport network as well. We reason that if both kinds of switches are controlled and used the same way, then it gives the service provider maximum flexibility in designing and operating their network and creating networking applications that reap the benefits of both kinds of switching technologies. And so we built a prototype network that converges the two and we call our prototype PACSI or Packet and Circuit Convergence. An example of a network application could be one that aggregates traffic in the packet switches and maps them onto different circuits depending on the traffic type. Then those circuits can have different characteristics suitable for the traffic type. They could be routed differently or given different variable bandwidths or different recovery mechanisms. To demonstrate our ideas, we have built a system in our lab that emulates a wide area PACSI network. Here we see two GUIs one which shows the packet topology comprising of access and backbone routers in three cities, and the other that shows the circuit topology comprising of circuit switches and fiber links interconnecting the backbone routers over the wide area. Currently, there are two circuits supporting two wide area packet links over which all the packet flows are routed. But since all the flows are from the same customer and they are being routed the same way over the wide area, we can aggregate these flows in the packet switches by simply changing the flow definition. We can even create aggregates for different traffic types, voice, video, and web traffic. With knowledge of the circuit topology and control over the circuit switches, we can map these aggregates into different circuits. For example, since propagation delay is important for voice traffic, we can create a circuit which brings up a link in the packet topology over which we can route the VoIP aggregate. For video, minimum propagation delay is not as important as avoiding variability in the delay or jitter. And so for the video aggregate, we can create a circuit that is not necessarily the shortest path, but it is one that avoids jitter by bypassing the intermediate packet switch at Houston, and therefore avoiding the possibility of variable switching times in that router. We can even send multiple video and voice aggregates down the circuits specifically created for them. And we can monitor the usage of the video circuit and change its bandwidth if needed. Here we show a video being streamed through the video circuit, playing at an end user's video client. And as you can see, the video plays smoothly. But then we increase the traffic through the video circuit, which congests the links, packets get dropped, and the video playback suffers. But at the same time, the controller detects congestion in the network and compensates for it by increasing the bandwidth of the video circuit and the video plays smoothly again. Finally, we demonstrate network recovery. When a fiber cut happens between the San Francisco and Houston switches, the controller prioritizes the rerouting of the video circuits over the best effort web traffic circuit.
These and many more new capabilities become possible in an OpenFlow-enabled converged packet circuit network. The OpenFlow-based architecture allows us and others to experiment with new ideas. It could help the service providers use their infrastructure more efficiently while introducing new revenue-generating services.